Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. When we're living in the streets because of people illegally and demorally doing things to people, we have to know how to survive. To survive, you have to know who to trust. And when you can't trust other people who live in the streets, you pretty much don't spend any time with them much. Because what you're trying to do is produce a life for yourself. Their responsibility is to produce a life for themselves. But just because you live in the streets doesn't mean you can't be kind to other people. There's an old elderly black man that I sometimes give a little pocket change to when I have it. But I only do it when the Lord says to. There's been times when I've questioned God, should I give it to him? And he says no. And then I discover later why, because there'll be more to give to him later. And that's the truth. What I've also learned is that I'm no different than any of the other players. That people are always trying to play us with food, trying to always give us their leftovers. And some people are so incredibly vile and rude, especially white Catholic boys, that they actually think that it's okay to throw food at a homeless person. I had one Catholic sports boy trying to offer me pizza when he was inebriated. And I said, no, please, I've already eaten. No, thank you. And he just didn't want to take my no. He wanted to insist in front of his two friends that he was going to be in control. So what he proceeded to do was pick up a piece of his pizza and throw it at my head. It actually hit me in the head. And I just sat there in amazement at the stupidity of that boy that he didn't realize he could have ended up dead. If I was a true biker, if I was a true Harley man, I might have just shot him in the head. Young people are not really smart about how to handle things they don't understand. I've had people cross the street and try and walk up behind me. First of all, when I see their destination, I see that their choice to walk at that moment of time was either conscientiousness or stupidity. In a time of COVID, we need to make room for people. We don't have the right to walk right on top of them just because we need a part of the sidewalk or the street. We still have to show our courtesy of people by stepping outside of the lines of six feet. And when you do that, it gives you the right to come back into that space, but it doesn't say I'm commanding the whole place. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth of the world. And the truth of the world is if you think you have rights to shave someone in the night, or cut their genitalia, or harm their life, or steal from their property banks, or just abuse the shit out of someone else's life, you prove that you're an immoral bastard of Satan's house. I say this pretty regularly. You are a black soul. And I'm not saying that to be inappropriate about ethnic groups or culturally diverse groups. What I'm saying is you're choosing your life. You're choosing what you look like to me. You're choosing what you look like to your family. You're choosing what you look like to your friends. And I can tell you that the boys around that boy who threw the pizza at my head were mortified. They literally were telling him to walk away. They were totally in his face saying, get out of this. Move now. Because they recognized the staff that I had in my hands could have banged up on all their heads like an old man would do to teach a young man a lesson in life. Today, I made a sure statement to a young boy who made the wrong choice, thinking he was playing a game until he was recognized in his mind that he was a foolish young boy. That a foolish young boy can make a mistake that adjusts his whole life. That a foolish young man can make a stupid idea come to life that abuses and creates a hate crime. A foolish old man will play the ping game with his friends. I'm going to follow this guy. I'm going to show up on him. I'm going to drive my big badass truck near him. And I look at those men and go, I don't know who taught you the rules of life, but what I see in your maintenance group is a dumb motherfucking man. And just by saying the truth of my opinion, I'm sure one of those motherfuckers are going to keep trying to sexually assault me and abuse me to teach me their rules. Well, their rules are, frankly, against God's house. At no time did any heavenly father or divine mother of any concept of the world, architecture, or divine creation say to you, go out and fuck somebody in life in the way that you think to. You see, your attitude is, I'm going to teach that motherfucker a lesson. No, what you proved was you're a little boy who's a bully who wants to be in charge of me 
and other people. You're probably a boy who's walking into women's houses, stealing their underwear, peeping in their drawers, or stealing their money too. My guess is nobody taught you how to be a good man. And nobody taught you, but you also made a choice not to even bother to try to learn how to be a good man. Because a good man in the world knows how to protect his life. The first thing we do is protect our own life. The second thing we do is protect our wife and our children. The third thing we do is we protect our employers and our friends. And if you're off track on that, that's on your life. But God in heaven makes some pretty sound straight rules across every good book of the world that talks about the origin of peoples and the origins of nations. But we are a foolish country at this time, allowing people into our country that don't have any regard for God at all. And the children of foreign countries, the children of Asian places that don't have any concept of God, where they have no Buddhism, no Shintoism, no Amaterasu, no nothing, they don't regard human life at all.